Hello there, and welcome to Homeschooling Adventures. My name is Patrick from Jerawi, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at foreign exchange. Now, businesses or countries, they trade with each other. If there is a level of uh, demand that is in their local economy, that they cannot be able to satisfy using the local production capacity or using the local resources. In such instances, it would now mean that one country will have to trade with another country so that they can be able to provide those goods and services. Now, in trying to do this, there are a number of uh, reasons why businesses would end up trading with each other. The first reason that uh, causes uh, this international trade is what is called uh, population. It could be as a result of the population size. Population size. Now, with population size, what it means is that if we have a higher number of people that are still staying in a country, it would obviously mean that there is going to be an increase in the aggregate demand in that particular economy. So in this case, it would mean that if we have more people that are staying in the country, then we are likely going to have a higher level of demand. And the population size then would then entail that the businesses that are unable to satisfy that level of excess demand that is there, will have to look at other alternative ways of trying to provide for those uh, goods and services that are being demanded locally. So the population size is one uh, reason why uh, we are going to end up having one country trading with another country. Okay? And then the second reason why we will end up having one country trading with another country is the income level that is in the economy the general income uh, level in the economy now it will be uh, generally understood that if we people in a particular economy generally have a higher income levels or generally earn more money then it would mean that they would do, sometimes they would prefer to demand goods that are bought from outside than those goods that are being provided locally and in such instances, we we'll end up having to look for those goods or source those goods from other countries, those goods that were not produced locally. And in such instances, it means we are going to end up having one country trading with the other. And then the other reason why we are going to end up having our goods being bought from other countries is the wealth. The wealth of a now, if generally we have a wealthy country, generally people will end up feeling that it will be, they will do rather buy a product from outside the country than the products that are manufactured locally because they will be able to afford. Or sometimes you would also find that if the people are wealthy, then they will probably uh, prefer to go and shop their products from other countries. For example, maybe in South Africa, uh, someone might end up feeling that because now they are wealthy, then they would rather go and do their shopping from Australia, or they would rather go and do their shopping from uh, New Zealand, or they would rather go and do their shopping from United Arab Emirates. So in such instances, it means if people become wealthy, they will prefer to go and buy goods from other countries. So the third reason why we will end up having uh, international trade is the wealthy of a country. And then the other reason why we are going to end up having one country buying goods from the other country, okay, is uh, because of uh, what is called preferences. Now, these preferences, they generally cause people to buy goods from other countries. For example, we might be having someone who is a resident in South Africa, ending up preferring goods that are probably coming from Italy, okay? And then they would rather buy products that are coming from Italy than to buy products that are local. So those preferences, so people prefer certain products that are outside the, the country and cannot be provided locally. It will end up resulting in South Africa having to trade with other countries. And in that case, it is as a result of preferences. 
and then the uh, other reason why we we'll end up having uh, international trade is because of the consumption. Okay, now if you look at consumption, it would be generally mean that people who are in a country would prefer uh, to buy certain products. For example, if we have an underdeveloped country, it generally spends most of its basic income on buying basic products and less on luxurious products. While at least if we look at a more developed country, we are going to have the people spending most of their income on demanding luxurious products. So it would mean that the consumption patterns that we have in a country, they are also going to be determined by the level of development of that particular country. With the poorer countries or developing countries demanding or spending most of their income on basic products and not the luxurious products. So these are the five demand reasons why we end up having international trade. So the first reason that we identified, we said it's population size. And the second reason that we identified, we said it's the income level in the economy. And the third reason that we identified is the wealth of the community of the country. And then the fourth reason that we have identified is the preferences of the people that are staying in that particular country. And when we look at the preferences, remember we also say it also if it involves even the test. What do they prefer the people? So if they prefer certain products from other countries and those products cannot be provided locally, then we are going to end up having uh, people demanding products from other countries. And then the last reason that we identified is the demand reason for international trade. We say that the consumption patterns, like in this case, we're looking at a developing country uh, preferring to spend most of its income on our basics, while least are a developed country preferring to spend most of its income on luxurious products. So these reasons that you can see on the board are learners. They are called the demand reasons for international trade. These are the five demand reasons for international trade. And the easiest way to try and remember this, I will just, we'll just give you this mnemonic. It says the P, we are going to say people, people, it's for the P. In other words, this P, it speaks to the population size. Okay? So it's people. And then the next one that we have is in, in, and this in, it represents income. Okay? And then the next one that we have is our wheat bank. Okay? And this wheat bank, it represents wealth. Okay? And then the next one that we have is a pref prefer, and this prefer, it represents preferences. Okay, and then this C here is going to be coffee. So this coffee represents consumption. Now, the easiest way to try and remember the five reasons for international trade is people in wheat bank prefer coffee. People in wheat bank prefer coffee. And what that means is it's population size, income, wealth, preferences, and consumption. So these are the five key reasons for international trade. And for today, we are going to look at this, and this is what we have looked at now. Wish you good luck in all your studies. If you like the video, please click the like button and remember to subscribe to the channel. All the best in your studies. Thank you very much.